Britain should introduce a £15 minimum wage. That's the conclusion of a new report from the Progressive Economy Forum think tank, and it's being promoted by Labour's Zara Sultana. The cost of living crisis is unprecedented. People's living standards are being hit like never before. Poverty pay is rife, and the national minimum wage isn't enough. It needs to be a real living wage, enough for people to actually live on. And research from the Progressive Economy Forum shows that it needs to be £15 an hour by 2024. The fall in living standards is the biggest since records began in the 1950s. Pensioners are riding buses to keep warm. Parents have to pick between feeding their kids and heating their homes. This shouldn't be allowed to happen in one of the richest countries in the world. And at the same time, big businesses are making massive profits. Last year, BP and Shell made around £20 billion in profit. That's expected to double to £40 billion this year. And this isn't isolated. Profits across the board are at record levels. The economy isn't broken, it's rigged. That's why trade unions are supporting a £15 an hour minimum wage. A new research from the Progressive Economy Forum shows that if this was introduced over the next few years, it would benefit millions of our lowest paid workers and tackle inequality. The research shows that nearly 14 million people would see a pay rise under these plans. A £15 an hour minimum wage would put more money in the hands of workers, giving them the same share of the economic pie as they had in the early noughties. And because better paid employees pay more in tax, we can use some of this extra money to help smaller businesses pay their workers a decent wage. Progressive Economy Forum's research shows that the poorest three quarters of households would see a 12.5% increase in their earnings. This government talks about levelling up, but this would actually do it. A £15 an hour minimum wage would see more than half of employees in the north of England and just under half in the West Midlands receive a pay rise, and in decades of poverty pay. It's time to transform our rigged economy. We need £15 an hour minimum wage by 2024. And we're talking about that report, not only because it has some interesting conclusions, but because it was co-authored by today's co-host, James Meadway. James, um, give us the elevator pitch. Why is a £15 an hour minimum wage a good idea? Well, I think Zara uh, covered that quite well. I mean, we, we've had a decade now of uh, people's wages going nowhere, that, that even at fairly low rates of inflation since what 2008 onwards, people's pay has not been rising fast enough uh, to keep up with prices. So you've already got entering COVID-19, people are underpaid. You hit COVID-19 and then we get this shock of inflation uh, coming out the other side of it. And now people's wages in real terms, their purchasing power is falling very rapidly. Fastest rate, it says since the 1950s, that's official records. More likely, if you look further back, you have to go to the sort of industrial revolution, maybe the 1830s to find a period where people's living standards uh, are collapsing in the way that they are now. So it's, it's a disastrous thing to, to have to happen. What we're saying is, is very simple, really, that we just need to pay people more. If you want to deal with a situation where prices are rising very rapidly, one of the things you can do to get around that is to get more money to people, especially when they've just had a decade of not being paid enough, right? That's that's what the argument of £15 an hour uh, minimum wage comes down to. And after sort of doing the modelling and going through the numbers and the rest of, the rest of this with, with Howard Reid, my, my co-author, you find that about 14 million people would get a pay rise on the other side of this, which is a huge, huge increase to, to people's incomes and living standards and the protection we find against the likely uh, inflation that we're going to see over the next few years or so on the official forecast. So that's a huge difference that you can make there. Never mind sort of fiddling about cutting VAT or whatever, or, or you know maybe scraping a bit off the basic rate of income tax and it's a bit more cash for some people. This is a really serious way to end poverty pay in Britain, protect people against uh, the inflation we now see and compensate them for the fact that basically wages haven't risen for the last decade. So that's why we recommend doing it. And we say, of course, it's affordable, perfectly affordable for a rich country like Britain to be able to do this. And most people will admit this would be a nice thing. I, I can't think of anyone who's saying it would be actively a bad thing if people got paid £15 an hour. The responses I presume you'll get, um, either from people on the right or from the centre, is that if you pay everyone a £15 minimum wage, either that's going to put some firms out of business or make people cut those workers, lay those workers off, or, um, and I suppose given we're in the middle of a cost of living crisis, it's going to be the big one, is going to increase the prices of those goods and services that low-wage workers provide. 
will this increase prices? Um, which prices will it increase? And sort of what's your response to that? That we've just got to sort of live with that and it's worth it? We don't think so. There's there's two parts to that, really. The first one is that the inflation we're getting now, although there's a story and, and lots of people try and push it, whether they're the governor of Bank of England or occasionally West Streeting or, you know, many points in between, that we might have a wage price spiral that, you know, wages go up, so prices go up, so therefore you have to put wages and it's this disastrous sort of supposedly situation where every time you put up wages, people respond, firms respond by putting up prices. So people demand more pay increases, people put up prices. This kind of, This just isn't happening. Right, prices are going up because of huge international factors. It, it doesn't make the blindest bit of difference uh, to the price of gas that you're getting from Qatar if you pay nurses in Britain less. Uh, cutting the pay of, of teachers or, or somebody who works in Tesco's or wherever doesn't stop Russia invading Ukraine. Right, these are the things that are driving prices right now. So it's kind of nonsensical to say, "Oh well, we, we can't put up wages because we, we risk prices going up." Prices are already rising for a whole load of things that have nothing to do with wages. What we're saying is you need to compensate people for this. And what we demonstrate in the report is that if you say, okay, we're going to just give a bit more of the economic pie, basically if we increase the minimum wage, £15 an hour, the slice of the economic pie that's going to people in work gets bigger, as you'd expect, because you're paying people more. But it only gets as big as it was under the last Labour government in, in the 2000s. If we could afford to give workers that size slice of the pie then, we can afford to give them that size, size of the pie now. So that's that's the the argument around prices and what's happening here. The other bit to throw in, of course, and this is the bit that really doesn't get talked about enough, is that look, if prices are going up but wages aren't going up, somebody somewhere is making a lot of money out of that, and it's not people being paid wages and salaries. It's somebody making big profits. You can see it really obviously in the case of BP and Shell. Last year, between them, made £40 billion profit. That is because prices have gone up, not changed anything they've done, not invented a new kind of oil, and they're making more money out of it. There's not magic new gas they're supplying. It's prices have gone up, so they make more money. If we want to tackle the cost of living crisis, you have to squeeze profits to do that. You have to take on the profits that are being made. And one way to do that is to just increase the amount of pay that you're giving to people on the other side of, of, of that equation. So, so that's the argument there. Really, this is about redistribution. It's about giving people a fair slice of what we produce in this country and correcting for the fact we've basically underpaid people for at least a decade now. All of us here at Navarra Media are working harder than ever to keep scrutinizing establishment politicians and the media barons who protect them. We don't have billionaire funders. We don't have advertising partnerships. We're funded entirely by you. If you've ever thought about supporting us, now's the time to go to navaramedia.com slash support and donate anything you can from just one pound per month. Defy the corporate media, join our monthly supporters and help build our supporter base to 10,000 strong. 